Ishtar, Queen of the Amazons. Ishtar was not merely the goddess of love. By the side of the Amorous goddess, there was also a warlike one. The Syrian goddess who migrated westward was a warrior as well as a bride. Among the Hittites and their disciples at Asia Minor, she was served not only by Gali, but by Amazon's warrior priestesses as well. The Artemis of Ephesus, her lineal descendant, was separated by a wide gulf from the Aphrodite of Cyprus. Both Artemis and Aphrodite were alike the same offspring of the same Babylonian deity. But in making their way to Greece, they had become separated and diverse. The goddess of the Hittites of Asia Minor preserved mainly her fiercer side. The goddess of the Phoenician Cyprus, her gentler side. Both sides, however, had once been united in the Ishtar of Chaldea. The Greek myths which recounted the story of Semiricus recorded the fact for Semiricus is but Ishtar in another guise. As Ishtar was called queen by the Assyrians, so is Semiricus the queen of Assyria. The dove in which Semiricus was changed was the bird sacred to Ishtar. Her passion for her son, Ninyas, the Ninevite, whom another version of the myth names Zames or Samas, in an echo of the passion of Ishtar, the Davkina of Eridu, for Tammuz, the sun god. The warrior queen of Assyria, in fact, was the great Babylonian goddess in her marital character. while the gentler-mannered Babylonians preferred to dwell upon the softer side of Ishtar. The Assyrians, as was natural in the case of a military nation, saw in her mainly the goddess of war and battle. Like Babylonia, with its two centers of worship, Atarek and Akkad, Assyria also had its great sanctuaries, of Ishtar at Nineveh or Arbella. That she should have no famous temple in Ashur, the old capital of the kingdom, shows clearly the comparatively late development of her cult. Doubtless, the earliest inhabitants of the Assyrian cities had brought with them the name and worship of Ishtar. But it could only have been long afterwards that it attained its final celebrity. Indeed, we can trace its progress through the historical inscriptions until it culminates in the reign of Ashur-Banipal. There was a particular cause for this gradual development, which was connected with the warlike attributes of the Assyrian Ishtar. The Assyrians were essentially a Semitic people. Their supreme goddess, accordingly, was that vague and colorless Belit Ili, the mistress of the gods, who sat as a queenly shadow at the side of Bel, Molil Molmisara, Bel and Belili. This is Zeus, female side. They had none of the associations with the older Akkadian goddesses, with their specific names and functions, 
which the natives of the Babylonian cities possessed. Apart from Ishtar, the evening star, there was no goddess among them who could claim a more independent position than that of Belit Ili. Ashur himself had no special consort, like Zarpanet at Babylon, or even A at Akkad. Except Ishtar, therefore, the Assyrian pantheon was destitute of a goddess who could assert her equality with the gods. Please hit that notification bell to ensure you are notified of each upload. Share, like, comment and subscribe to support the channel for more ancient mysteries.